Hey Hornets, my name is Jamie Lewis, and it's my honor to serve as your principal here at Valley Center High School. It's been a long time, a little over five months now, since we last had students uh, walking through these hallways. Too long. We're very excited about uh, getting you back and having the opportunity to reconnect, the opportunity to interact uh, and to grow alongside one another. The past several months have presented countless challenges and no doubt there will be additional challenges to come. But we've got a solid plan in place and we know that our staff and students are resilient and together we will overcome. So with that, I wanna take a few minutes just to share some of the things, some of the changes uh, in processes that you can expect to see upon returning for this school year. So come along and let's take a look. So again, Hornets, one of the first and uh, most obvious uh, changes th that you see already is uh, that I'm wearing a face mask uh, and, and masks will be required. Uh, obviously, um, there are different types of masks. What I need to make clear is that neck gaiters uh, by themselves will not be allowed. Uh, nor would face shields by themselves be allowed. Um, students, staff, um, visitors, everyone must wear uh, an actual face mask uh, in order to uh, uh, enter the building. So upon entry, uh, the next thing that will occur is temperature checks. Uh, we'll, of course, we'll have everyone social distanced, but uh, we're gonna step in here have our temperature taken. Uh, we'll have a number of staff that will do exactly that. Um, and upon uh, making sure that your temperature is, is within the appropriate threshold, then of course you'll proceed on into the building. If for some reason there would be uh, a scenario where your temperature is too high, uh, then of course we would have to uh, take additional uh, steps in uh, uh, contacting guardians and having have you uh, sent home at that time for precautionary measures. So uh, again, masks upon entering, you'll have your temperature check and then we'll proceed forward from there. One thing I do need to point out as well while we're here is these exterior doors. We, we have a different schedule this year uh, and these exterior doors uh, will not open uh, for students to enter until 7.15 in the morning, 7.15, and there will be limited access points. Uh, students can enter either these front main entrance doors, the north uh, entrance where the buses drop off and pick up, and then we'll also have one set of west side doors uh, right there by the office that uh, you can enter as well. Again, each of those will open at 7.15 in the morning. I've entered, I've got my mask on, I've had my temperature checked, we're making our way into the building. Upon making our way on into the building, you'll notice that we have these hand sanitizing stations uh, at each of the entrances. We'll also have those set up uh, in each of the classrooms as well. Uh, we do want students and staff, uh, everybody within the building, uh, to be sanitizing uh, and washing hands on an hourly basis. Uh, so we have placed those throughout the building and in the classrooms. We've had the opportunity to do that. We'll proceed on in. It's morning. Uh, we've just entered the building and sometimes uh, upon waking up, making your way to school, you're a little hungry. Uh, we will still have breakfast, although this year it will be a grab and go breakfast. Uh, we won't have students congregating uh, here in the commons. Uh, or throughout the building. Instead, it will be a quick grab-and-go breakfast. Uh, you get your items and you'll make your way directly to your advisory classroom. We're going to talk a little bit more about that here in just a little bit, uh, what that bell schedule change consists of, but as soon as I've been able to grab my breakfast, if I want to, uh, then I will make my way directly to my advisory classroom and I will remain in there from the time that I arrive until the end of advisory period, at which point uh, it will be time to transition to first period. 
Here we go. As mentioned previously, uh, we do have a change in our bell schedule for this year. Uh, for those of you that are returning from previous years, you know that in the past, uh, we started school at 7.45 in the morning. This year, we will actually be starting at 7.40, so five minutes earlier. Uh, the other change, of course, is that we've moved advisory to the beginning of the day. Uh, it used to be after third period. Uh, for this year, uh, advisory will be moved to the beginning of the day. Again, it will start at 7.40 in the morning. Um, and uh, those exterior doors, of course, as I mentioned, will open at 7.15. So please make note, and uh, we plan to see you bright and early, uh, 7.40 for advisory period. The other thing I want to point out uh, with regards to schedules is that recently you were asked to complete a survey in which you had the opportunity to select either an in-person hybrid learning mode or a full-time remote learning mode. And as you can see uh, with what's in front of you, um, currently we are slated to begin in an AB hybrid mode. Um, meaning that for those students who selected in person, you've been placed into either an A group or a B group. And you can see with the chart, uh, if you are in the A group, then your in person days are Monday and Thursday. You will be remote Tuesday and Friday. The opposite is true uh, for uh, the B group. Uh, the B group would be in person Tuesday, Friday remote Monday, Thursday, and of course, all students, A and B, would be remote on Wednesdays. So we'll have no students in the building on Wednesdays. Again, uh, please refer to that chart uh, for which days you're in person and which days you're remote, depending on A group or B group. We also have uh, students who have selected full-time at-home remote learner. Uh, which simply means that, that, that you will be at home uh, all five days and uh, uh, you'll be joining classes uh, from home. Uh, it will look uh, a little different than what, uh, how things were set up for continuous learning last spring uh, because that, uh, again, is a, is a completely different mode. But uh, full-time uh, at-home remote learners, uh, you will remote in with the rest of the class, at least uh, for a portion of the period uh, per school and teacher instructions. And uh, each of your teachers will be communicating with you uh, what that will look like, what that will consist of, and how to do so uh, in the very near future. Uh, there are some elective courses particularly that are not accessible uh, to our full-time remote learners. Uh, and that's just the nature of uh, what we could and could not commit resources to uh, for the remote learning. It's also important to note that if you are a full-time uh, at-home remote learner, you will be expected to keep a learning log uh, of your required 396 minutes per day. Uh, and that log, of course, will need to be signed off by a parent or guardian and then provided to uh, school personnel as instructed. Another key element, uh, obviously, is uh, what things look like within the actual classroom. And so uh, just to show you briefly, uh, we have uh, moved a number of desks out of uh, each classroom to account for uh, social distancing and uh, working with half of the class at a given time. And so uh, there again, rather than 24, 25 uh, desks in a, in a classroom, uh, right now, we anticipate somewhere uh, in the vicinity of 12 to 13 students uh, at any given time uh, between the A-B split. So another change uh, that we uh, definitely want to make you aware of is just uh, what things uh, will look like when it comes time for lunch. And so uh, as you look around the cafeteria here, you can see that uh, many of the chairs have been removed. Uh, and again, that's simply so that we can account for appropriate social distancing uh, throughout the day. And, and that includes the uh, shared spaces uh, uh, with lunch being an example of that. So uh, right now we've got two uh, chairs per table. We have some added tables um, 
uh, throughout the cafeteria area. And then we will also have a second location here in the building set up uh, as, a, as a second cafeteria. Uh, and so we'll spread students out uh, as best we can there uh, to make sure that, that we're uh, uh, adhering to those social distance, uh, distancing protocol uh, accordingly. Additionally, uh, we know that obviously uh, throughout the day, uh, we, we each become thirsty at times, we need a drink of water. Uh, and I should mention that there, there, was, there is a change uh, in the food and drink uh, policy within the classroom. So outside of that grab and go breakfast first thing in the morning, uh, we won't be having food and drink uh, in the classroom. We will allow uh, bottled water. And so we, we do encourage um, uh, bringing a bottle of water. Uh, of course, uh, those cannot be shared, so you'll need your own. Uh, we will have the water fountains, but uh, uh, one thing to make note of, we have the refillable stations, uh, the uh, bottle refillers uh, will be functioning uh, as normal. However, uh, the base stations will be turned off. So uh, you won't be able to use just the base station. You will be able to fill your bottle uh, as needed. A few questions have come up with regards to lockers. Uh, just a quick note to make note of. Uh, at least for the start of this year, we will not be using hallway lockers. So just want to make you aware of that so that uh, you can plan as needed uh, for the start of the year. Again, to start, we will not be using hallway lockers. In closing, students, I just want to let you know we're excited to get the school year started. It's been a long time since we last had the opportunity to connect uh, uh, between students and staff and and we're excited to get the school year started. We know uh, there are changes in store uh, and there are challenges ahead, but we know first and foremost that together uh, we are Hornets and together we will persevere uh, and overcome. So uh, take care, enjoy what remains of your summer break, and we will see you soon.